In the darkness we were waiting Without hope, without light Till from heaven you came running There was mercy in your eyes To fulfill the law and prophets To a virgin came the word From a throne of endless glory To a cradle in the dirt
is for your glory mercy our failure his patience our failure his greatness our failure but his love isn't shaking it's erasing our failure and his plan was a man who would die and he'd save us but he gave himself low so low that we missed him but he came to our mess and lifted us rebels no man can rise to his level but there's but one who causes the darkness to tremble Reflecting his father, he grew, he healed, he fed and he taught us Turning tables on what we thought we knew about who God is His name is a light, cause this ain't a fight, this is a surrender This is a coup, a prayer, a decision This is erasing a million wrong decisions This is what it means to be Christian, this is why today we're forgiven But he came and we missed it He didn't fit our description We wanted a different kind of king, so he called and we did it Advancing our human tradition Taking matters in our own hands Canceling wisdom But Jesus wouldn't let us go We were his mission And he would fall for us So we could rise with Violent reminder. He was destroyed, forsaken, expired, and darkness extended as far as our eyes could see. But that darkness was not meant to be. His name was a light, and his light set us free. Held David for three hours, victory landed. Our sins defeated, and our hope handed to us. 
A love so commanded, we can't understand it But it's there for you look Crosses in the sand Nails in hand Thorns for a king King of the dark King of the light King of death King of life King of all Well, good morning and happy Easter we are so glad to be with you online today, celebrating the resurrected King, light in the darkness, the one who made the darkness tremble when he rose again on Easter Sunday. And what a time to celebrate, what a day to celebrate our King resurrected, bringing life, bringing hope, bringing freedom to you, to me and to all of our world. A happy Easter. It is a happy day indeed. Hey, why don't we start off our Easter service just by doing that, by praying and praising God for the freedom that he has brought. Why don't you commit today to really engaging in church, why don't you commit, throw yourself in, maybe you're not used to church, maybe someone has invited you this morning on Easter Sunday. Hey, well, let me pray for you as those who are used to church will pray as well. God, we thank you that today is Easter Sunday, a day that we put aside to remember that you are resurrected, that you are the resurrected King, that you bring light into darkness, that you defeated darkness, God, and your light is still coming in to dark situations and dark places in this day and in this world, God. We celebrate the fact that you are risen. Amen. Amen. Well, it really is great to be with you today. Hey, we are going to be taking communion together today. Communion is something that we do as Christians to remember the death and the resurrection of Christ. So uh, I just want to encourage you, take a moment right now, run to your kitchen, grab some bread, uh, grab some wine or some blackcurrant juice, or if you've not got any of that stuff, it is quite all right. Grab some water, grab a Pringle, grab something um, that is somewhat similar. It's okay. I did communion the other day with some people and I didn't have, it was on Zoom. I didn't have anything. I didn't have any wine in my house. I didn't have any black currant juice. So I was there with a cup of tea doing it instead. But hey, grab something, run to your kitchen now, uh, grab something so that you are ready to share communion together. We might not be together physically, but online we will do this together. And I'm really excited to be sharing communion with you on this Easter Sunday. Hey, whilst some people are in their kitchen preparing uh, for communion today, why don't you take the opportunity to say hello uh, on our online chat. It'd be great to let you, uh, to, for you to let us know that you are here and to talk with other people today. You can keep on doing that throughout the service as well. If you were in a physical building this morning, you know, and you were talking, uh, someone would probably turn around to you and say, shh. Uh, but hey, you can comment, you can say that's great, you can let us know that you're here, you can say hello to your friend uh, this morning online, it is great for you to do that. You can share this service as well, if you're watching on Facebook, it's easy to share this service onto your wall and on our online platform as well, you can post this service to your uh, social networking feeds, that would be fantastic, who knows? Someone might stumble across your feed today and, and they might uh, connect with our King today. If you do that, you can really celebrate Easter by sharing the light into people's world uh, today. Hey, before we uh, move on to the service, it was great for those of you that were able to gather with us on Tuesday night. We had our vision night where we were looking forward into the future of the church. And it was so uh, good. And if you want more information about that, hey, please reach out. But we want to let you know this Tuesday night, we have got team night. So for anyone that says, yeah, now church is my home and I want to commit to, to the work that is going on there. And I want to I want to be on a team. I want to serve church. Hey, this night is for you. You can book in uh, online, but we would love to see that as we talk a little bit more about the culture of church and about the culture of our teams as well. So don't worry if you don't know where you want to serve. Don't worry if you don't know your giftings. Don't worry about any of that. But if you know that you believe in where this church is going and you want to be a part 
of helping it get there, then that night is for you. Tuesday night, eight o'clock on Zoom. Hey, I wanna read uh, to you something from the Bible as well. Why don't you, if you've got your Bibles, turn with me to John chapter 20. We're gonna be looking at this passage this morning. I just wanna read the first verse to you before we enter into a time of worship together. It says this, John chapter 20, verse one. It says, early on the first day of the week. I don't know how early you got up this morning. Hey, maybe you are still in bed this morning. I don't know, watching this, but early on the first day of the week, while it was still dark, so uh, we know that it's fairly early, Mary Magdalene, came to the tomb. So she was keen to get to that tomb. Early in the morning, she got up, she was wasting no time. As soon as she was around, she was out of her house. She was getting to that tomb, to her king, who she thought was lying in that tomb. She wanted to anoint his body with oil. She wanted to prepare him. So we know early in the morning, early on the first day of the week, while it was still dark, Mary Magdalene came to the tomb And what did she see that first Easter Sunday? She saw that the stone had been removed from the tomb. She knew that something was different. That Easter Sunday, something had shifted, something had changed. And I wanna tell you, we know the story, we know the end story. Mary's not quite there yet, but we know that that tomb was empty. Jesus was no longer dead, but he was alive. He had fulfilled the prophecies. He had fulfilled all scripture written about him. He had had done what was impossible by us. And he had taken our sins away from him so that we may truly have life. And Mary, that morning, she got to the tomb and she found that the stone had been rolled away. And today the stone is still rolled away. The tomb is still empty and our God is still bringing life. And we really have someone to worship this morning. This Sunday, as we celebrate and really remember Jesus' resurrection, we really can worship that he rose from the dead, that he made a way where there was no way, that he brought life to the darkness. And today we're going to worship God. So why don't you stand to your feet in your homes today? Why don't you give it all that you've got? Because our King is a resurrected King. Let's worship together.
You have 
Nothing compares to this. What a beautiful name it is. God, we thank you that your name is beautiful, that you are beautiful, that no one, nothing in this life, nothing at all compares to you. We thank you, God, that we get to know you, to experience you, to feel your presence. Lord, what a beautiful name it is. Amen. Amen. Hey, why don't you sit down now? What a beautiful name. What a beautiful God it is. What a beautiful God we have. I'm going to read to you again from John chapter 20, the next verse in our passage. So remember, we've had Mary. She's come to the tomb. She's found the stone has been rolled away. And then verse 2, it says this. So she ran and went to Simon Peter and the other disciple, we know the other disciple to be John, the one whom Jesus loved. And she said to them, they've taken the Lord out of the tomb and they do not know where they have laid him. You see, Mary, she got confused in that moment. She went to the tomb expecting to find something, but it was completely different. 
but she got confused. She said, they've taken our body, this, the body of our king. See, sometimes we can blame Mary. We can say, what's she on about? We, we remember, we know the end of the story. And the fact is that Mary and the other disciples, they've been told the end of the story as well. Jesus had told them that he was going to die, that he was going to be crucified, but that he would be risen again. And, and all of the prophecies about the Messiah said that he was going to be with them forever. But Mary got confused. You see, since Jesus had told Mary and the other disciples, when Jesus had told them that he was going to be resurrected, life had got in the way. Things had happened, not to mention Jesus' death, but probably other stuff was going on in their world. And they forgot the truth of what Jesus had said to them. They forgot that Jesus had said, hey, I am going to be risen from the dead. I will be with you for ever sometimes we forget that truth as well we forget that Jesus has said hey I will be with you forever and we get life we let life get in the way we let our issues get in the way we let the problems that the world throws at us we let the darkness of the world get in the way of the fact that Jesus is with us forever Maybe you've forgotten that Jesus has said, I'm with you forever. Maybe you've forgotten the power of the resurrected King in your life this morning. Maybe you're facing some confusion. You look at your world and you say, I don't really know what is going on. But today, the truth is that Jesus is resurrected and Jesus is here with us now. Jesus is here with us now. And what a day to remember again, to say, yes. I remember, I declare that truth in my life, in every situation that I'm going into, that I have the resurrected King with me, the one who defeated death, the one who made darkness tremble. He is with me. And we're going to remember that in the way that Jesus has told us to remember by taking communion together. So I want you to grab your bit of bread, grab your wine or your juice or your water or whatever it is that you've got this morning. And we're going to take communion together. We're going to take it. We're going to remember Jesus's death and we're going to remember his resurrection. The fact that he died for us. He died for you and he died for me, making it possible. And Jesus, when he was with his disciples, when he shared this meal with his disciples, he got the bread, he got a loaf of bread. He took it, he tore it and he passed it around. And he said, here, take this bread, eat it, remembering that it's my body broken for you. Jesus' body broken for us. So take your bread. Take some and eat it now, remembering Jesus' body broken for you. And Jesus got a cup of wine, passed it round his disciples and said, Hey, this is my blood shed for you. I am the sacrifice that is needed for your sins to be forgiven, for you to have a new life in me, for you to come and spend eternity with me, for your old life to be gone, and for you to enter into this life, a new life, a full life, the life that I always intended you to have, my blood shed for you. Drink this in remembrance of me. Let's do that now. thank you that you are the resurrected king but to be the resurrected king you had to die for us that your body hung on a cross that your blood was shed that you were the sacrifice that we needed and you gave yourself for us God may we never forget your death and may we never forget your resurrection may we not forget the power that that still has in our lives today. The fact that we can live differently because of this Easter weekend, God. Help us to remember, I ask, and I pray for each and every one of us. 
Amen. verse continues Mary, she gets to the disciples, she runs and she tells them, they've taken the Lord out of the, out of the tomb, we don't know where he is, we don't know where they have laid him, then Peter and the other disciple set out and went towards the tomb the two were running together and as they say it's probably about just under a mile distance, the two were running together but the other disciple John, probably the younger one of the two, outran Peter and reached the tomb first. I love this passage. I love these words, but it's a real challenge as well. You see, Peter and John, they hear that something has, is different. They hear that something has changed. And what do they do? They run to the tomb. That morning, early in the morning, they do not wait, they do not dawdle, but they run to the tomb. They get, they get ready, they put their running shoes on and they run to the tomb. They don't let anything hold them back. And how often do we run to Jesus today? It's a challenge for us this Easter Sunday. Do we run to Jesus? Do we run to him with our problems? Do we run to him with our issues? Do we run to him with our whole life? Or have we settled into a, just a casual walk? I might get to Jesus at some point, but first I'm going to go here or I'm going to go there. I'm going to get to Jesus. I'm going to get to where he is. But first I need to sort out this issue in my life or my finances or my marriage. Those are great things to sort out. But are we running to the tomb? Because when we get to the tomb, when we realise that Jesus is no longer in the tomb, but he is resurrected. Actually, those things are a lot easier to sort out. Maybe just in life now, you realise you are running, but actually you're running away from the tomb. Maybe not intentionally this morning. Maybe there's something that is distracting you from God this morning. Maybe it's work. Maybe it's a relationship. Maybe it's an addiction. Are you running, but are you running to the wrong place? Hey, well, it is never too late. And what a day. We can really know that is true. You see, Jesus died. He died once and for all. And our sins are forgiven. And hey, we haven't committed those sins when Jesus had died. So it is not too late. You might have known God. You might have been running towards him. But you've realised this morning that actually you're no longer running towards him. You don't even know where you're running. It is not too late today. For you to turn around and to run to Jesus again today. Just like Peter and John did on that first Easter morning. Easter means to me uh, time off school with my family, Easter eggs and the whole 
fact how Jesus died and got resurrected three days later. For me, it used to mean to me that about Jesus dying for us, spending time with my family, getting Easter eggs and having fun. But Jesus gave his love for the tree. Um, about celebrating God. The God that Jesus gave his life for us to be able to live free of sin. Um, the time when we get to celebrate because God died for our sins. Um, it means how God got, um, gave his life for our sins. Uh, my favourite Easter egg is either Cadbury's or Maltese's. I like Cadbury's, but I also like m &Ms. What is this heart done? Uh, caramel leg. The cream egg. Uh, celebrating Easter in our house is usually we wake up, um, give out the Easter eggs, we usually eat some of it, and then, um, I mean, some years we do an Easter egg hunt. I think last time it was like. Two years ago, we had it recently, but yeah, that's how we celebrate Easter. Celebrate Easter by we wake up, we get we give out some money and some Easter eggs, and then later on in the day, um, we usually invite our friends, some of our friends over, then we have an Easter egg hunt depending on the weather. For me, the best thing about Easter is probably A, not having school, B, spending time with family, and C, probably, probably the Easter eggs. For me, it's probably knowing that Jesus died this day for us, and then also knowing that we get like Easter eggs from time with our family, and also no school. About getting to spend time with your family. Uh, well, getting to know more about uh, God and how He gave us and um, to be with my family. I get to bake with me more. Spending time with family and friends. In just a moment, we're gonna hear a short message from a guy called Mark Ritchie. Uh, he's just gonna talk with us just for five minutes this morning. But before he comes, I wanna share with you a little, well, I wanna continue and finish this passage that we've been reading this morning. So Peter and John, they're running towards the tomb. It says the two were running together, but the other disciple outran Peter and reached the tomb first. He bent down to look in and saw the linen wrappings lying there, but he did not go in. Then Simon Peter came, following him, and went into the tomb. He saw the linen wrappings lying there and the cloth that had been on Jesus' head, not lying with the linen wrappings, but rolled up in a place by itself. Then the other disciple, who reached the tomb first, also went in, and he saw and believed he saw and believed this morning i hope you can see our prayer is that you can see that our king is no longer in the tomb but he is alive john in that moment he saw the empty tomb he saw the the burial cloths that Jesus was wearing still in the tomb but Jesus was no longer there he saw and he 
believe. He believed that Jesus was resurrected. He believed that his king was on the throne. He believed that actually there was hope for his life. He believed that healing could now come. He believed that miracles could happen. He believed that life was worth living because his king was resurrected. This morning, will we believe? Will we believe? A little while ago, I got the opportunity to go trekking in the mountains for three days with a group of really great guys. I was to carry all my provisions, my food, my gear, my sleeping bag, my tent, everything on my rucksack. It was pretty heavy. The first couple of days went really well, but on the third day, I hit a bit of trouble. We'd been walking through the mountains the whole day and we were all pretty tired. The main group of guys were setting up camp and they're putting their tents up. I was about 20 minutes away with a couple of leaders setting some stuff up. And once I'd done that, I was really keen to get to the main camp and set my tent up. I kind of asked for some directions and I set off on my own to find the camp. Well, I got completely and totally lost. I was beginning to get a little bit fearful. It was starting to get dark. I picked up the pace and I went faster. I found out later that I'd gone in the complete wrong direction. I started to shout. I began to shout and was fully expecting to hear one of their friendly voices come back at me, but nothing. I really set off at a good pace. I thought, I've just got to find someone quick. I'd probably been walking for about another half an hour really pretty fast. When I get to the road, I start to really almost like run. I'm really moving fast now. I could tell that I was headed deeper and deeper into the mountains. After a bit, a car pulled up alongside me. I was able to take this weight off my back and put it into the car. And in talking to the guy, he explained to me that I was going in the wrong direction. I decided to change direction. He was able to take me back to main camp. I've never been so delighted to see guys before. I was so happy. I was giddy. I was ecstatic to be safe and everything to be fine. I found the whole thing traumatic. But in reflection, I began to see it as a picture of what Jesus has done for us at the cross. Just like I was lost, so we are all lost. The Bible says in Isaiah 53 that we've all gone our own way, that we've all strayed away from God and we're lost. Not only that, but like, you know, as I was carrying that really heavy weight of a rucksack, oh man, I I couldn't wait to get it off my shoulders. And you know, we have got this weight, this thing called sin, that's like a burden on us. And, And the Bible says that, you know, every one of us has sinned and gone our own way. And just like I told you in that story, I had to realize I was headed in the wrong direction. This is what the Bible means when it talks about repentance. That we're all lost and we've all got this thing called sin that's weighing us down and we're all headed in the wrong direction. And repentance is when we stop and say sorry to God and we need to change direction. And then the most beautiful picture of the cross. You know, that car was able to get me back to base camp. And you know, the cross of Christ is the vehicle that gets us back to the arms of God. That through the cross of Jesus, we are able to be transported back into God's arms. There is no safer and greater place to be than back in the arms of God. And I wanna give you the opportunity that you can actually say to Jesus, Jesus, I'm sorry and I want to be found back in the arms of God. This is the prayer. Why don't you pray it right now? Dear God, thank you for sending Jesus. I give you my sin. I come through the cross right now into the arms of you, Father God. 
I receive your forgiveness. In Jesus' name, amen. Hey, if you prayed that prayer, if you ran into Jesus' arms this morning, we would love to be able to pray with you, stand with you and give you some resource that will help you to continue running into Jesus' arms. It might all not make sense, yet I doubt it will. I've been a Christian for most of my life and I'm still working stuff out. But we'd love to walk with you on this journey. And so if that is you, please reach out. Please let us know today so that we can help you on this journey. Let a friend know as well, maybe the person who invited you to church this morning. Because we would love to be able to help you on this journey. We think you've made an amazing decision. One that will transform and change your life. But let us know so we can help you on this. And hey, maybe your next steps will be coming to church. Maybe that's back online next week if you're not able to get out yet. But we also meet together at our Langold location uh, in North Nottinghamshire near Worksop. And we'd love to see you there uh, in person on a Sunday. You need to book a place because we're limited. Um, because of our capacity and because of social distancing uh, but we'd love to see you there uh, next Sunday and that's not just for those of you that have prayed that prayer but everyone is welcome to come and join with us uh, at our Langon location on a Sunday as well. Hey before we finish this Easter Sunday uh, and before we worship with some singing one final time I just want to give you an opportunity uh, to, to give as, a, as church, as Christians, we believe it's important to give some of our finance back to God. It's saying, God, hey, I've given you my life. I've ran into your arms, but that's all of me. And that's some of my money as well. I recognize that you have all of me. I've given you all, but here, take some of my finance back. Uh, and so I just want to give you the opportunity now uh, to give to God. There's different ways you can give. They're up on the screen. Hey, and if we can help you as well in any way, if you've got prayer requests, we've got people that would love to pray for you. If there's anything we can help you with, if you've got questions about God or about your faith or about the church, uh, we would love to be able to walk uh, through those questions with you. But why don't you reach out if that is the case? Hey, and don't forget this Tuesday night, we have got our team night for anyone that says, yeah, I believe in when now church is going, I want to be part of that i don't want to miss out on the opportunity to be part of that hey that night is for you and we are looking forward to seeing you there on tuesday night hey but let's worship our god together through singing one final time in this gathering uh now and it's been great to see you and we will see you soon Let it put